the age of the universe is something like 13.7 billion years old. The Earth was created about 4.5 billion years ago and is made out of the debris of two previous generations of stars. Now, life on Earth started at the ocean shortly after the temperatures cooled down, close to 3.7 billion years ago. Life was predominantly of single-celled organisms during more than 3 billion years. The similarities between all present-day organisms indicate the presence of a common ancestor from which all known species, living and extinct, have diverged through the process of evolution. More than 99% of all species, amounting to over 5 billion species that ever lived on Earth, are estimated to be extinct. Moreover, the estimated total number of species on Earth today is 8.7 million. According to researchers, an astounding 86% of all species on land and 91% of those in the seas have yet to be discovered, described and catalogued. The Red List issued by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature assessed 59.5 thousand species, of which 19,625 are classified as under threat. This means the IUCN Red List monitors less than 1% of world species. Extinction occurs when its individuals are poorly adapted to their environment, becoming less likely to survive and reproduce than those that are well adapted. Now the major factors that can lead to extinction are new diseases, new predators, new more successful competitors, changes to the environment over geological time such as change in the climate, or a single catastrophic event such as a massive volcanic eruption or a collision between an asteroid and the Earth. These last two factors are abruptly more impacting because they transform several characteristics of the environment as a whole that can cause an ecosystemic disruption. In the past 600 million years, life on Earth has been marked by five events of mass extinctions. Each with multiple causes and distinct peculiarities. However, studies indicate that there is a certain pattern in most of these major events. Growing evidence suggests that four of the five great mass extinctions have been associated with rapidly acidifying oceans due to spikes in the concentration of atmospheric CO2. The third mass extinction event was probably the worst of all five. It has also been nicknamed the Great Dying since a staggering 96% of species died out some 250 million years ago. Its official name is the Great Permian Extinction and it shows the environmental evidence of ocean warming, ocean acidification and deoxygenation, which is the loss of oxygen from seawater. Now this is astonishing, because those marine changes are the very same threats to the oceans that scientists of today are worried about, due to ongoing climate change. Phytoplankton assemblages will be amongst the organisms most affected by these marine changes, now this is huge, because a whole rearrangement of the communities means something to both the food web further up, but also for things like cycling of carbon and oxygen. Studies point that phytoplankton produces between 50 to 85% of the atmospheric oxygen, and only in the last 50 years, plankton productivity was produced by 40% due to ocean warming. Furthermore, Direct effects between ocean acidification and photosynthetic ability have been observed to increase under elevated CO2 concentration. Ocean acidification will dramatically affect global populations of phytoplankton as well. People are not going to care about animal conservation unless they think that animals are worthwhile. And as we are utterly dependent of the air we breathe, the microalgae issue appears to be a proper and clear argument. In terms of biodiversity, man is the new kid on the block. And besides being a more successful competitor, humans are also deadly predators, disease spreaders, catastrophic event creators, 
such as frequent oil spills or atomic power accidents and explosions, for instance. And last but not least, human activities are causing global changes over this geologic period. Geologists affirmed that the relatively stable interglacial Holocene epoch is already gone and we've just entered the so-called Age of Man or the Anthropocene. So, add the fact that we're already living in the sixth mass extinction event. Once the extinction of plants and animals are at rates that far exceeds what it would be expected to see naturally, even so, most people are not even aware of it. Nevertheless, there's still hope to stand for not destroying our home planet. We can't save mammoths anymore, but there's still a chance for our future generations to see rays and tuners living in nature. Because today, they are still there. And if we, as a global community, transform our current behaviour for all, a more sustainable framework, maybe those threatened species can flourish once again. Being in touch with the natural world is crucial to both health and awareness. People must feel that the natural world is important and valuable and beautiful and wonderful and an amazement and a pleasure. Only then can humans change our perception and our behaviours to become better stewards of our only blue planet.